This is a segment from the JustRPG.com podcast. If you enjoyed this, you can check out the full podcast link in the video description below. Enjoy! What makes a game have good replay value? That's a good question. <sighs> That's that a really good question. <sighs> there has to be something unique. Definitely change and uniqueness, I think. Because there's a lot of games where... I, I don't think it's required. Why not? I feel like it is, otherwise it's a grind fest. Well, what I'm thinking of may not be specifically RPGs, but games with RPG elements. And those elements themselves are what gives it the replay value. So maybe we thought of this a little differently, but... uh, For example, I was playing uh, a puzzle game with RPG elements, Meteos. And it's like every every puzzle you complete gives you points, and you can use those points to buy and upgrade things. So, and that is what kept you going. You know the upgrades, I mean? the upgrades, and those RPG elements. Yeah, I was. But if you already know how to solve each puzzle, I feel like it's not interesting. You've well, the, 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 this one was more of a. It was like a random thing every time, and uh, it wasn't. Specific yeah, that's puzzles. the uniqueness. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense when you put it that way. Yeah, I mean. You know, it's because the only like the big turnoff is like the same boss fights. There's no suspense. You know what's going to happen. But I think a lot of the times, if you can see like different characters' perspectives, or there's different roles, different choices you can make, different dialogues and videos. Oh, what happens when? If I was nice to this girl or mean to this guy, or certain things triggers like that. I think it's fun. But I also I know a lot of RPGs they do like the New Game Plus seems to be. Like yes, the- I was going to ask. What, what do you think of New Game Plus? Do you like that? Ah, uh, no. I mean, sometimes, like, it's always, like, I, I know it's there. I like having it, you know, knowing it's a choice. But generally, because, like, RPGs take so long to play, I usually just move on to the next game. You know, I mean, I've bad- only done it maybe twice. And it's games that, like, I've already fallen in love with. And the fact that New Game Plus was there was just kind of like an added bonus at the end. It didn't really change my opinion of the game. Usually, I don't even finish New Game Plus. Yeah, fair enough. Like for, I'm trying to think of the games where uh, Tales of Symphonia had New Game Plus um, and Chrono Trigger, and that's about it. Those are probably the only games I ever I've ever done it in. Like when I'm thinking about it, there's been very very few RPGs that I've replayed, and usually the common trait between them is like a lot of years go by, and then I get like that feeling, man, I really want to play this game again. It's not so much something that like brings it back. However, I will think you're going to hate me when I say this, but I think a really good example of like replay value is Final Fantasy VIII. And hear me out. Well, I never finished it, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the game, they have a junction system. Yes. And it's easily somewhat abusable, but it also has like a good amount of side quests. So you can like junction certain of your summons to certain characters. And you can, uh, there's certain abilities, each summon has like experience abilities, you can get like special abilities or the ability to junction another level or stat. And I feel like after you play through, like your second playthrough, it will be easier to a point, but like, usually when I generally first play an RPG, well when I was younger, now I'm a completionist, but when I was younger, I would just like play through it, you know, do my own thing, and then I'd replay it, be like, oh, I know how to do this now, it'll make it a lot easier. And I feel like it was kind of more fun because I knew what to do. I was way more efficient. My characters were stronger. You know, it wasn't just grinding up a bunch of items and abusing the items in that game. Like, I I thought it was pretty interesting because you can do, like, the card grind early or you can just, like, absorb a bunch of, like, magic from certain bosses. So so what this sounds like to me is um, it's, in a way, kind of like like stat allocation that, that you can't change. Yeah, well, here's a good example I know that you can relate to, and a lot of the users probably, because this game's really popular. Disgaea. Users, we're, we're a drug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so so in Disgaea, imagine you've never played Disgaea before, okay? Mm-hmm. And they're just like, hey, you have to beat this game as fast as you can, and you get a certain prize or whatever. So you play through it and everything, okay? So you beat it, whatever, 30 hours go by. Now, when you play it the next time, how much different is it going to be? You understand, like, what items are good on what characters, what to level up, how to grind, you know. 
which areas on the map you can combo with the blocks, like all these kinds of things. You know what I'm saying, kind of? Mm -hmm. When there's a lot of like game mechanics and elements you can like add together. I feel like that's always a good thing. How do you feel if a game almost kind of forces it? For example, the game of the month, uh, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, um, there's a point about halfway through the game where uh, you have to choose to either take control of uh, Ephraim, the, the main male character, or the, the his sister. And basically there's two branching off paths and there are unique missions and characters you can obtain on those missions for each path. And, and once you beat it, it just continues the story. It doesn't go back and then you do the other side. It's, it's, it's like a choice. So if you wanted to see those other characters... Or if you wanted to play those other missions, you basically have to restart and go to up to that point and then make that decision again. So do you like if a game does that, or do you wish you, you would kinda it would kinda like pause the story and you go back and you kinda did it again? I think uh I think I like it, but I don't think I would replay it for that. I think I would just YouTube a play me, kind of. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds kinda bad. But I I'm, I'm nothing against watching people play games to see other parts. I mean I did that with Tales of Zillia because there was like, sir, I wanted to see what the other scenes were to get parts of the story. Like, instead of playing as, like, Mila, you can play as uh, the other character, June mm -hmm. Maxwell, or whatever his name was. Yeah. Uh, June Mathis, sorry, Maxwell. It's my last name. <laughs> also, Mila's last name in the game. Maybe just a little full of yourself. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I think uh, I think that's cool, you know, because it makes you think. I If it's, like, super linear and straightforward, I don't really like it. And I'm okay with, like, I think there should be more punishments in games for making bad choices without the ability to save. Like, I think it's too easy to have, like, the perfect playthrough right now and, like, games in general. And I think, like, if you choose to play as a certain character, so-and-so is going to die or so-and-so won't be able to be saved, stuff like that. And I think concepts like that are good in games because they get you emotionally invested. And, mm -hmm. like, everything can't be happy-go-lucky. Some of the best films and, like, filmography are, like, crazy intense it's not always the predictable happy ending you know yeah like being able to surprise i think it's really good i mean kind of bringing it back to my favorite genre of rpgs tactics games or tactics rpgs when those rpg elements are more present compared to when they're not i'm definitely more likely to keep playing i'm going to take advanced wars for example advance wars um dual strike for ds and then advance wars days of ruin for ds um both basically the same game, but Dual Strike, basically every mission you did, you get points, and you can then use those points to buy different upgrades or to buy different characters and to buy different maps. Now, you can still buy maps and get, like, different costumes in um, Days of Ruin, but in Dual Strike, there's a lot more, and it's, for some reason, a lot more engaging because of that. You're, I find myself, when I'm playing Dual Strike, going to, like, just skirmish missions... And just grinding them because I'm way more into it. Same with like the sky. If there's that something to grind for and some RPG element there, then I'm way more interested. So me too. Me ma too. Maybe maybe this is kind of a separate question, but uh, when when those RPG elements are in not necessarily RPGs, I think that's a big big plus that really increases the replay value. I agree. I agree. Or not, maybe not, maybe that isn't replay value. Maybe that's just extending the gameplay itself you know wh whichever it is i think that's a both important. i think it's both yeah. even in, even in the replay value though because like i think that's the healthiest grinding you can have too it's like optional grinding yeah because like the worst is like when it's forced it's mm -hmm. like Man, i really want to know what happens like after i beat this castle area and go to the jungle or whatever but i can't because i'm too weak so i have to grind this is so boring like when it's like tedious but if you had a choice you're like, oh, I can, like, grind and then, like, maybe go visit the Sahara area before I go to the jungle, even though that area is, like, really high. Like, what do I do? Like, mm -hmm. when you have, like, choices and stuff like that, I think the grinding is healthy grinding. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do also like to grind in some cases. Like, uh, some some good old Dragon Quest, I think, is always fun. And those are very grind-heavy games. It's kind of required. It's kind of built into the, the assumption of what you're going to do when you play it, but... And I, I don't necessarily dislike that in most, in some cases, but only if it's done well, like I think in Dragon Quest. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's Breath of Five or Breath of Fire. Breath of Fire. 
Or wait, is Dragon Quest the one where they had like five of them, and the last one was Dragonfire? No, um, Dragon Quest was basically like one of the first oh, yeah, NES like RPGs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breath of yeah. Fire, I think, is Super Nintendo on, and they ported the Game Boy Advance and PS One, and I think a PS Two. Oh, Quest for Glory. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, how did I? Yeah, I don't know how I'm confusing all this. Yeah, I know what uh, Dragon Quest is. Dragon Quest Seven was like super popular on the PS2. Oh, Dragon Quest Eight. Was yeah, it Eight? It. Yep, Seven the was PS1. Yeah. Yes, yes. The 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 king who got turned the monster and his princess yep. who got turned into a horse. <laughs> okay. One of my favorite PS2 games, by the way. But it was a really good game. I didn't. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's. I respect that it's good. Triggered. Yeah. Triggered. <laughs> Same with uh, Final Fantasy VII. Like I was never a big fan, but I yeah, know you you missed game. last week's. But we did our. What do you think of the most overrated RPGs? And Vicky and I pretty much agreed Final Fantasy VII. But it's hard to say. I definitely don't think it's overrated just because of its time. You know, it's hard to say that that game's overrated. I don't. I definitely don't enjoy it as much as the. I guess if your context is something you don't enjoy, as the vast majorities, then yes, it is overrated mm-hmm. in my opinion. But as the for like the timing and like all, like they just set the fucking standard for role playing games. Like the, I mean, I mean, I definitely respect that game. But yeah, you have to, you have to. One of the best yeah. games of all time. It's just not a personal favorite, you know. Mm-hmm. All it's right, like, so, so I mean, I'm sure there's people who don't like Ocarina of Time. I'll stab them, but <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's get let's get back to the topic here for replay value. I bet I'll you be the same s- people who think uh, Ocarina of Time is bad also thinks the Earth is flat. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll end it at that. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So besides New Game Plus, um, what else do you think? And you know, RPG elements and non-traditional RPG games. Is there anything else you think you could throw in there to increase replay? Re- 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 I guess we mentioned uh, different storylines and stuff like that. But can you think of any others? I, I'm kind of hard pressed too. Um, I mean, there's, I don't, I don't like when games add bosses, Tales of Series does this all the time, that are only accessible after you beat the game. I don't like that at all. Like, I like to beat I, the I don't game. mind that. See, I'm not a big fan of that. Just make them way harder than the final boss themselves, you know, like the Final Fantasy games do, and make them where you can defeat them before the final boss. Like, I mean, I'm, usually with those bosses, you're going to do it after. Anyway, well, put this way. One thing I do hate is when you beat the game and it's just over. It doesn't let you kind of, like, get free reign to go around the world afterwards. I like see, post-game I like content. That. I like post-game content. I think it's okay, I guess. But, but, like, but that's not really story? replay. That's continued play. Yeah. Like, I guess for me, I just, like... Like, when I beat a game, it's like, I just want to feel finished, feel moved, and I just want to move on. Like, on See, to I, I do, when I play any genre except RPG, if I actually get through the an entire RPG, that means I really like it. And that means that I probably want more. I either want access to a sequel, or I want access to post-game content. Because, again, if I actually got through the whole thing, that means I'm, I, I really enjoyed it. I would never force myself through a game that I didn't enjoy, especially an RPG. I did that. A couple times. Huh. It's the worst. Yeah, I, I definitely don't try to do that. It's it's hard, but for me, I sometimes I feel like I waste my money. Oh, I paid for it. I got to review it. I got to write stuff down. I got to get it through my system. And it's almost like taunting me, you know. Oh, you can't play me. <laughs> so, but no, I, I get your point, though. Like, the ability to keep playing. And I agree that's always nice, you know, and it's easy to put in, but... I don't know. It's just, it's so sad when you beat a really, really good game and you know it's over. <laughs> it's very yeah, sad. definitely. It's like reading a good book. I don't know why I thought of this, but my my friend Jim, who's been on the podcast before, actually one of some of the first episodes, he, uh, he always tells this story that when he was a kid, his parents bought him Kirby for NES or something like that, right? And he beat the game, and it was the first time he ever beat a game, and his family threw him a Kirby party. Like, his mother bought a cake in the shape of Kirby, and they had a big party. And I always wish that if I beat an RPG or something like that, I would get a party like that. It never happened, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine Imagine you beat some game, right. and, you, and you get a party for... Yeah, you did it! 
I remember I would uh, I would ask my father to try to beat a level for me when I was a kid. I remember the exact game too. It was Kingdom of the Crystal Castle, I I'm believe for familiar. NES. I don't know that one. Yeah, it was a side scroller, and you have like a pet dog, you know, a guy with a sword, pet dog. I think it's only four different levels, but I remember I would have my dad, "Can you beat this level?" And like, it's hard for me to believe because that was a really difficult game. My dad would beat the level. <laughs> like, he didn't even play video games, but somehow he would beat it, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, I think th- I think there's a point where the parent is able to help, and then something, some new system comes out, and then they're done. Never can do well again. Oh, yeah, my it always seems like that. My dad ain't helping me out with Dark Souls. I mean, <laughs> my dad had some unbeatable ghost in Mario Kart 64, but you know anything on GameCube over his head. I, I don't know why, but you know that, that's, that's just how it was. It's funny how that happens. Well, I think we've completely derailed. I think I think we've done with this question. <laughs> yeah. So we move on to the next one.